Hi everyone and a warm welcome back to Warno for the monthly March tournament from SD League. Today we are having a couple of games with Tommy Two Socks and Lieutenant Morningwood. And no, I'm not going to say that full name out multiple times in the video. We will call him Lieutenant Wood, which probably sounds just as bad. Lieutenant Wood is playing on the right in blue as the Unternamed in Zentrum. And over on the left in red, we have Tommy playing as the 79th Tank Division. Lieutenant obviously taking Bravo nice and early as we would expect and the majority of Tommy's forces going down to Alpha. Pretty standard affair here. An MI-24D up out at the front doing a bit of damage but is already taken out by that SU-25 from Tommy Two Socks. Tommy Two Socks also with that recon chopper really far forward. That Strella is just not interested in it at the moment. Very little down here for Lieutenant. He is bringing an Estrella down there. There is a command tank rolling in that way. That's quite ballsy for this stage of the game. I don't think that'll be rolling straight into Alpha, that's for sure. Nice advantage in points right now for Lieutenant, though. He does have the back point capped and this middle point capped. There is a command in there. Command infantry. One command in currently for... Tommy and he's just kept Alpha. He has just called one in for Charlie as well. Just a couple of recon up here for Tommy now. Didn't actually lose his recon here to that chopper. And I don't know what it is, but looking at this, it does feel like the lieutenant's a little bit thin on the ground. He's calling in a couple of tanks at the top there. Alpha Clara. ATGM, ATGM. Do they have good line of sight? Technically, they should have line of sight on that vehicle, but... They aren't actually shooting at it. I assume he's turned off attack transports. That can be a risky business, as I've mentioned before. You don't always want them to waste missiles on transports, but at the same time... You know, people use transports for scouting. They get points back if they're not destroyed. Uh, on balance of probabilities, I like to just destroy them. So I, I have that on to kill them. But, you know, you've got to keep an eye on them. Sometimes people will try and waste your missiles. You need to be able to resupply. Reasonable spread of units here for Tommy. He is sat in the middle of the town, though, rather than the edge. But he does have at least a couple of units right out here looking outwards. Line of sight on that isn't great because he's kind of quite far in. He sort of wants to be up here. But that said, it's a tight area. We discussed this previously on a game on this map. These are short ranges. Really, conkers and things are more for this kind of area and this kind of area where you've got a long distance that the enemy is going to be coming towards. Here, you know, when a tank pulls around that corner, they're going to be in your face and already firing at you. Nothing in here for Lieutenant, which means that obviously Tommy is just having a little bit of free reign to move his chopper around. There is a Strella back here and another ATGM, a little bit far back perhaps. So much Starkey coming in there in BMP1s. Certainly plenty of units here. There's a T-80U coming in at the top there, which will be slightly annoying for Lieutenant, but I think, you know, he's got enough ATGMs down there to deal with that. The question is, will either of these players push hard? Currently, Lieutenant has the win because he's out and ahead in point by 170. Now, these are both new players to me. I assume fairly new to the game, fairly new to tournaments. Just looking at some of the units that they are pulling out. For example, ATGM choice. SU-25 getting a couple of good kills there. Obviously, recon being a great advantage here. Cub getting a nice kill on the SU-25, though. Nice to see a Cub in back here. Another Strata coming in here. Plenty of units moving into this town now for Tommy. And Tommy bringing in a lot at the top. I think Tommy is going to push Bravo at some point. Certainly bringing in plenty of units up that way. Now, if you've watched the channel a while, you'll know I love casting and watching new players play. 
because they bring in such different tactics and strategies to what you're sort of used to with the meta and you just get to see units being used in a different way not to say that the meta isn't fun to watch as well it's just nice to see something different good use of covering fire from the btr 60 here as these infantry move up and I had a question on my Discord about moving units, and you'll see here that these Radved Kasapri, which have those satchel charges, are being moved up quick move, whereas other units have been perhaps moved up on attack move. Satchel charges, obviously, you want to be up close and personal to the enemy, and that's why Tommy was running them into the building there. Plenty of units coming on up here, including a command infantry, the one that was brought in to cap that, Good choice, just moving things up. T-80 coming in down here. A little bit of skirmishing going on up here now. T-80 being engaged by those Conkers. Conkers doing a good job. Conkers are dead though. Other Conkers still firing. T-80U pushing up. T-80U should win this fight. Smoke on the T-80B though. There's another T-80B back here. That is being fired at as well. Oh. T-80U gets a nice hit there. BRDM2 dead now as well. Nice slow progress from Tommy here. Just picking stuff up as he goes. Quite a build-up of forces back here, but obviously the problem for Lieutenant is he's very far back. He's nowhere near the point, whereas, as we can see up here, Tommy is very close to this point. He has a much bigger chance of getting a command in the corner there. A couple of artillery pieces in here now as well. What are they firing at? They're just sort of arbitrarily firing into the town in general. Not necessarily going to get any kills that way. A little bit of movement from Tommy down here as well. We could perhaps see Tommy try and push this point. There's sort of a defensive wall here from Lieutenant. Some artillery coming in for him as well now. And obviously some munitions there. A lot of infantry in vehicles still clustered in the middle of this town. I'm not sure what the plan is with those. Let's see if we can see where they're moving to. Not actually going anywhere. I would really consider deploying those troops myself. But it depends what he plans to do with them. They're just a lot more susceptible to artillery fire, to tank fire and things. If they're in the vehicle, the vehicle gets destroyed, they die. It's as simple as that. Good use of artillery here. Has moved it up and is now attacking this building here has managed to kill all of the ATGM troops that were in there. Of Clara, heavily damaged. This is some good maneuvering and pushing here from Tommy. Good use of that artillery. He's also managing to keep a little bit of momentum down here. Though, isn't really going to push, I don't think, towards Delta. Just getting his own nice defensive line up there. And the Conkers here moving into a much better position. As you remember, they were back there. They're now moving up to here, and they will be able to see out down this road. And that's brilliant. So that's where you want Conkers. You want them to have their maximum range. Look at how big that circle is. You want them to be firing at their maximum range because they will outrange the tanks. That's the aim of the game here. Outrange the tanks that you're trying to kill. Moving up into the building, even better for the Conkers. They've got more defense in there. Tommy just being a little bit pushy down here as well. Killing these Alf Clara. Very good job. Just taking out all of this recon. Counter battery fire here, but Tommy is moving his artillery. Tommy's doing a good job here. He's forced Lieutenant back from the edge of the town. Look at that. He's now got nothing in the buildings there. They're destroyed. He's had to move back here. Shots coming in across here at the tanks. T-80 got a nasty hit there. Those Spetsnaz have a really good line of sight. The Spetsnaz group have the radar so they can see into that forest. Because they have the advantage of having the little radar symbol there. If we click on them and have a look, you can see that they do have the ground surveillance radar. 
A little bit more skirmishing here at MI24. And yeah, called in. Oh, some counter battery from the side of Tommy now against the lieutenant. Lieutenant is also moving his artillery. And my 24 out of anti air missiles managed to do a little bit of damage to that MI 8, but the MI 8 just trundling away. Not really fussed. Estrella is being brought up to try and assist. Significant build-up of forces here. Another T-80U coming in there. Plenty of tanks, plenty of infantry. Tommy should be able to get in that corner of that point. Nice defensive wall here, but Lieutenant needs to make some kind of move to push this point and keep the aggression up. Because at the moment, we're in a situation where Tommy doesn't need to bring in reinforcements at Alpha. Tommy can just keep piling stuff in for his assault at the top. If you keep the pressure on Alpha, then it means that Tommy still needs to split his forces. Easier said than done, but that's just what you've got to find a way to do. MiG-31 gets a kill. All a little bit quiet right now. About 12 minutes into this game. Some more recon being brought in there. UAZ being used as recon here for Tommy. They don't have a great line of sight. I would have expected that tank to fire at that. That's strange. I think, again, this could be a settings issue of do not fire at transports. The transport's obviously been captured there by Lieutenant. Again, this comes back to, you know, do you have the settings on where you let units automatically attack transports? My general advice would be, yes, let them. Unless you're paying attention to everything and can spot them and command your units to kill them, you're better off just destroying them sometimes. Otherwise, they're going to be used as scouts like that. Not everyone uses them as scouts. I very rarely do. Most of the time I have mine to sell automatically. Strella here getting engaged by the artillery. Another good lesson here for new players. If your anti-air fires and the enemy has artillery, move your anti-air. Because someone is going to fire back at that anti-air. Very lucky Strella here. It didn't die. But obviously, if you don't keep moving your anti-air around the same as you would your artillery, you're putting it at great risk. Because people will go out of their way to kill it because it poses a threat to their aircraft. And if they have air superiority, they can bomb you into the Stone Age. Like that Cub, for example, has got a couple of shots off, but I would really move it now. And that's something that comes with experience, and sometimes you forget. Sometimes I just completely forget that my unit's fired, and I haven't moved it. Seed coming in here. We'll be going for that Cub. Is the Cub turned on? Yes, it is. There goes the missile. Cub is dead. So... Another thing, when you're bringing in cubs, so anything that has radar, if we click on the cub down here and have a little look, you notice it's a radar anti-air unit. So seed planes in the game have anti-radar missiles, so they will automatically t attack and track anything that is using radar. So... Sometimes when it comes to bringing in the radar anti-air, once you're a bit more experienced, what you kind of need to do is put them on a control group. So that would be select them all, press control one, control two, control three, whatever would be your standard. And then use the H key as your hotkey to turn their weapon system on and off. And if you see a seed plane coming, you really want it to be off. Until the seed plane has passed and then you turn them on and shoot it in the back. And that really winds the person who's brought the seaplane in up. But again, that's something that comes with experience. So Lieutenant is still trying to counter-battery the artillery on Tommy's side at the moment. 
one thing to mention is counter battery is a great idea or a great concept but if your opponent is moving their artillery you're wasting your time unless they happen to forget and you get a lucky kill you're just wasting your shots on the enemy artillery when you're probably never going to hit them if they're moving them all the time so if you realize that your opponent is moving them around by how their firing pattern is moving because you can see obviously where the shots come from just stop firing at them and start firing at their units instead it's a better use of your artillery because most of the time that's what they're going to be doing so while you're busy trying to chase around their artillery and never getting a kill or a hit they're going to be laying waste to your troops just again something to bear in mind when it comes to sort of the the more macro how, of how you're playing and paying attention to what the enemy's doing the best way to kill enemy artillery is either to get a scout or recon unit near them so you can see where they are and then fire your artillery or get round behind them with a chopper and lay waste to them with that but you've got to have a good chopper and you've got to be quick i'm talking an apache with its cannon and that will rip them apart pretty quickly but bear in mind that you're probably going to lose that chopper because they will bring in jets to kill it and obviously you've got to find a way around there so here we go lieutenant has done exactly that has stopped firing at this artillery and is now firing at the units back here great use of artillery forces tommy to reconsider where his units are is forcing him to pull his units back away from that artillery he's doing damage this is great he's got three artillery pieces absolutely hammering that area Four, no five artillery pieces that's a lot of artillery that is a lot of artillery if you're bringing in that kind of artillery you need to be using it effectively because that's a i mean these aren't cheap 180 points a piece that's a lot of artillery and a lot less units on the front line so you've got to be really effective with your artillery to make that worthwhile you need to be killing stuff pretty much constantly now you see he switched back to trying to count a battery which just isn't going to work you see immediately tommy had moved but these five artillery pieces could be laying waste to this potential attacking force if he just kept firing along this line he could potentially be doing a lot of damage so in this situation potentially that's a better target Nice build-up of forces here, but very little movement at the bottom. Obviously, we can see that Tommy's pushed right out of that point now. He has nothing in there. doesn't have a command in there. The command is up here. Lots of exchange of artillery here. Some smoke going down, interestingly. Yeah, there we go. So it, the smoke's going down, and I think the idea was to try and smoke the tanks, and now we see that Tommy is pushing his forces forward. Good artillery play here from Lieutenant. He was hitting that front line. Unfortunately, obviously, the response is that Tommy is pushing forward. So this is where it becomes hard to target your artillery. With five pieces of artillery like that, sometimes it's also worth spreading their sort of attack out, I think. I'm trying to decide if they're all attacking the same place. Yeah, they are. So, if you've got that many artillery pieces, it's almost more worthwhile selecting two of them and attacking here and two attacking here and one attacking there spreading them out a bit if you attack or attack one area with all of them you're going to put down a lot of fire on that one area but as soon as the units have moved through that area or you've killed the couple of units that are in that position you're hitting nothing if you spread out your shots a bit then you're getting a little bit more coverage and potentially stunning more stuff causing more stress good use by tommy here of his tanks for long range sort of supportive fire he has taken some hits on those tanks cluster bomber coming in here we'll take fire from the strellas 
Australia does get the kill. No real movement at the bottom here. Artillery is firing again. What's it firing at this time? Some shots going down on here. That's a good position. So, Lieutenant getting ahead of the enemy. Dropping artillery on where the enemy is going. Fantastic. That's one of the best things you can do is predict where the enemy are going and hammer them as they enter. I mean, he's doing plenty of damage to these units coming in. That's a huge amount of attacking infantry he's just killed. He's done so much damage to them, and all the ones that are further ahead of them are very stressed out. SC-25 cluster coming in there. Does damage, but doesn't get a kill. Buratino here as well. Absolutely annihilating this area. Might even get a kill on that command. I don't think he's going to, but fantastic. So really good use of Buratino as well. Killing those units coming in. And now you can see immediately Tommy is just called in loads of reinforcements straight into the town. I mean, he is all in here. He is now plus four. He has capped that point. Unfortunately, Lieutenant lost his command in all of that. Because I think it was in the middle of the town. Obviously, lots of artillery coming in on the town as well from Tommy. Tommy doing a really good push here. Has built up his forces. Has used artillery effectively. Good response at times from Lieutenant. But he's just been outplayed here. And I think this is about a, a sort of experience level type thing. It feels like Tommy's a little bit more experienced in the game. But I'm really looking forward now to seeing how much Lieutenant improves between now and the end of this tournament. Because one of the beautiful things about this tournament, and I've said it before and I will say it again and again and again, is new players get better really quickly. Because they watch their games back, they talk to the people they've played against, they talk to the really good players. There's a really good community spirit about helping each other out, assessing where people went wrong, and how to improve. And I think that's a really great thing about this community right now. The SU-25 getting hammered here by the Australas. Seed coming in. No actual seed anti-air there. But Tommy in a really good position now. All those reinforcements are arriving and they will get into the town without any issues. There's nothing there stopping them. Just very good manoeuvring and positioning from Tommy here. He's still got some quite badly damaged tanks there and there is some supply coming in. But yeah, well played to Tommy. I think, unfortunately, there's no real way for Lieutenant to pull this back. I just don't think he has the forces on the field to do it. As I say, five artillery pieces is a lot of expense. Five times 180. That's a lot of money. Oh, we've seen very little movement at the bottom of the entire game, to be honest. It's all been up here, and all of that build-up first. Unfortunately, T-64 going up, up against a UD, no chance. T-80 UD very much wins that. Back to plus four. Tommy just pretty much cleaning up now. Reinforcements, FS Jaeger coming in now. But unfortunately, they're not going to fare too well against these Sapri at close range. And obviously the tanks can stop them getting in. Chopper's also in a good position here. Anti-air Chopper going for that one. Though it doesn't have any anti-air left. But Tommy just done a really good job there at cleaning up. Really well played. Commiserations to Lieutenant. Well played. Some really good manoeuvring at certain points. Good use of the artillery at some points as well. And there's the surrender. Well done guys. Obviously a significant difference in kills to losses there. 
Let's have a quick look at those kills and losses and see what really stood out. The MiG-31 did a good job. T-80s obviously did a really good job. Uh, Buratino did all right. I mean, if we have a look, the artillery that's obviously brought in on this side didn't get many kills. In fact, I only see two of them on here. One, two, and together they got three kills. Bearing in mind there were five of them in. And the other side, let's have a look at the artillery at the other side. Two kills there. Not really a huge amount at the other side either. But the MiG-31 there, certainly MVP for me, stands out as getting plenty of kills on those aircraft. But good game guys, let's hop straight into game number two. Game number two between Lieutenant and Tommy. Tommy this time on the right in red playing as the 7th Panzer Division and over on the left in blue we have Lieutenant playing as the 5th E Division Blindy, the French basically. I'm not a fan of this map. I think it's a bit all over the place. And I realise that I'm actually upside down to how I usually have it. There we go. That's better. So. Early caps for both players. Both have two commands in by the looks of it. Interestingly. Both have tank commanders in. Oh no. One tank command for Tommy. One vehicle command. Two tank commands for Lieutenant. Lieutenant rushing to cap as quickly as he can a couple of units pushing up here including the amx 10 rc obviously a very good unit interesting spread of units back here kind of hanging back for tommy down here in the center of the map not a huge amount sent to the center for either player at the moment majority of lieutenant's forces going for this point echo down the bottom that's not uncommon usually we tend to see the person on lieutenant side going for this point and usually this point one of the reasons for that is obviously the positioning of the town and things like that it just feels a little bit easier for them to get into those points a little bit of skirmishing at the top of the map there between the mirage and the mig 23 Mirage taking fire from those Strellas on the ground, though. Mirage doing a good job at avoiding them. Very lucky Mirage. Command in here for Lieutenant. Lieutenant has command in here as well, so currently has that plus one advantage. Command going in here to neutralize that, though. There is the command tank here moving back up. Likely wanting to go into this point for Lieutenant. Big 23 taking hits from that Mirage again. That Mirage will not die. Finally being evac Plenty of units being pushed into this point for Tommy. He should take that without too much difficulty. Neither player with anything in the middle. Echo at the bottom very much in Lieutenant's hands. A couple of Conkers coming in here. Okay, so Tommy's planning to build a defensive line at this point of the map by the looks of it. And will probably pivot from Foxtrot down into Delta. He has moved his command in at the back here. MX-10RC could cause issues for that command though. It is finally destroyed at the top there. Reinforcements coming in at the top for Lieutenant. I expect perhaps planning to build a defensive wall for this point. It's interesting. Both players obviously focusing very much on opposite ends of the map. Neither player focusing a huge amount on the center. I'm a little bit concerned that Lieutenant doesn't have any commands in the center. Obviously, it's only plus two currently to Tommy, so it's not a huge advantage. 
Amex 30s and some 10s with some chasseurs coming in there. More recon going towards the center. Tommy just slowly pushing up here. I'm just wondering. Yeah, there we go. I was wondering when we were going to see reinforcements coming to the center. And here we go. We can see there are some vehicles and some infantry being called into the center now. Just to help defend that point. T-72 coming in here. So yeah, we're seeing very much a defensive wall being built up here by Tommy. Kind of a defensive wall here for Lieutenant. He could make a push into this point. There are a couple of T-72s there, including the command tank. There's, oh, there's a command tank and a command vehicle back here. He really wants to hang on to that point. Another command tank being brought in by Lieutenant. Now heading towards the center there, coming in at the back of that point. AMX-10 getting some shots off at the Special Alpha Clara. Doesn't want to let that Special Alpha Clara get too close. Anti-tank jet coming in to deal with it now. Good choice. No anti-air there. There is a gun coming in, but it's not there yet. Will get out alive. No, it will get shot at as it flies over. Nope. Those little guns only got a couple of shots off. Mirage in here going for that MI2. Gets the kill. No anti-air there, so we'll get out intact. There's a cub over here now, though, for Tommy. That will cause issues even, I imagine, for the Mirage, which seems to be dodging everything at the moment. That command tank rolling in now. Anti-air pushing into here and up here. More reinforcements being called in there. Tenant Morningwood pushing in here with a couple of these AMX 30s. Chasseur is taking a lot of fire going across the open ground. Now the problem for Lieutenant here is a lack of recon perhaps. There is the AMX-10 but it's all the way back here. It doesn't have line of sight on these tanks. And I fear that... Yeah, this is what I'm worried about. Is that... Tommy is going to have visual range because of the special of Clara on all of these vehicles coming in. So he can fire at them with the T-72 before Lieutenant can respond. A little bit of skirmishing going on down here. MiG-23 anti-tank in again. I think trying to go for the command tank there. But yeah, again, we can see... Tanks here just getting shots off at these infantry and things. Because of that special half Clara. Just has good eyes on. AMX-30 is moving in now. But will take a lot of fire before they even get a shot off. They're both smoked. That eight, <laughs> that anti-tank jet coming in gets another kill there. This is a recon unit, but obviously you can't see anything at the moment. Chasseurs are dead. Another two AT units coming in there, going for the Roland. Roland takes fire. Mirage gets a kill on one of the anti-tank jets. Mirage is doing a good job here, but we'll evac. Rolling two, unfortunately. Not getting many shots off there. Lieutenant has managed to get his command into the center finally. We'll neutralize that and neutralize points, but Tommy way out ahead now. Tommy also just pushing a few units up here, getting a little bit closer to keep the pressure on this point, perhaps. Special Alpha Clara there, likely know where that command tank is. Couple of TO-55s moving up. Now, they are flame tanks, but they still have a tank gun. And there's three of them there. They are going to start firing, and they will do a lot of damage to that MX-30. MX-30 doesn't have a lot of front armor. I 
They're not getting lucky with their hits. And the AMX-30 is doing a lot of damage to them. But if they get a couple of lucky hits, there's a one. Oh, this is going to be painful. I don't know if he's watching it. I don't know if he can smoke. He probably can't smoke. And there it is, dead. I think he'd already popped his smoke against the aircraft. Back to plus two for Tommy. Another anti-tank jet coming in here. Will go for that tank and has killed the command tank at the back there. Lieutenant looking in a difficult position now. Another command tank is on the way in. MiG-23 going for that Mirage. Mirage going for the MiG-23 anti-tank. All the jets dodging stuff at the moment. MiG-23 down. Jaguar ATGM coming in here, going for this tank by the looks of it. It's smoked though. Good smoking by Tommy at the bottom there. Tommy solidifying control over the center of the map now, just moving up his forces. Obviously wanting to get nice and close to the Eclairs. I think there has been a loss of a tank down here. I don't know if the ATGM got that perhaps on its way back past. Certainly it is dead. I think that was another T-72. There's a T-72 command there. And I think Tommy is thinking about pushing into this point here. A little over 28 minutes left of this game. Lieutenant certainly on the back foot right now. Has lost quite a lot of units. Some very good airplay by Tommy in this game. MX-30 coming in and going straight for the center of this town. Obviously, without Lieutenant having his own units in there, this is really risky. As it will be very close to the other tanks. In close range, it will be a one-hit kill. Lots of reinforcements coming in at the bottom for Tommy now. He is just basically pivoted into a plan of attack on Echo. ATGM coming in again. T-72 can't protect itself this time. Unfortunately, the Jaguar misses with its missile. Conker's pushing up. MiG-23 in. Going for the Jaguar. Jaguar is down. Mirage in. Going for the MiG, though. MiG is already evacing. Jaguar may get the kill. It does get the kill. Sorry, the Mirage, even. Currently still plus two to Tommy. Almost to 700 points. Immediately, as I say, command tank destroyed. One hit kill at that range from the T-55. Mirage cluster coming in here. Not sure what it's going for. Has already taken a lot of fire. Has dropped its bombs on the center there. Is down. Hits across the town. But unfortunately all of the anti-air were here. If only it had been a little bit further this way. He probably would have killed some of that anti-air. Lieutenant certainly having a bit of a rough time of it right now. Conkers here firing at the MX 10 RC. Gets the kill. And there's the surrender. Obviously, about double the kills, two losses for Tommy there. Shot game. You're not expecting too many kills or losses. Commiserations, Lieutenant. Tommy, well played again. Let's have a quick look at the kills and losses. Nothing really to stand out there. I guess, to be fair, it's got to be the Flame TO-55. Because it got two command tanks. So, that probably gets the uh, MVP there. But well played to both of you. Looking forward to seeing how you progress through the rest of this tournament.
Thanks for watching, everyone. Please do like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you all soon.